Shukaku was one of the most overpowered tail beasts and deserves way more recognition, because as the one tails, he was given to the Suna Kagure and was most notably sealed inside of Gara, who later became the Kazekage. But he wasn't always viewed as such since the citizens thought he was the spirit of a corrupt priest, who in actuality was just his previous Jinjuriki Bunpuku who happened to be a Suna priest. But the reason I said he was overpowered is because he has two nature transformations and one Keke Genkai. He has Earth release which allows him to control sand to such a degree that he can temporarily restrain a Senjutsu and Susano and completely block its sword. He also has wind release which he uses to fire off wind bullets that can also be combined with Gara sand to create sand bullets. But the cherry on top is that he can combine his two chakra natures earth and wind to create the magnet release Keke Genkai using the curse marks on his body. And it's this same magnet release that he lent to Naruto who infused it into his Rasengan to seal Madara. Matatabi might just be the worst tail beast but at least she has one of the coolest designs. Because as the two tails, she along with Gyuki were sold by Hashirama to the Kumagakure and was sealed inside of Yugito who is her only known Jinjuriki. Her legacy though must have been pretty strong since she along with Gyuki had murals in the inner walls of the Fountain of Truth. But the reason I said that she was the worst is because she has no redeemable qualities outside of being a massive chakra battery. Because outside of the standard abilities of a tailed beast such as the tailed beast bomb, she only possesses one chakra nature which is fire release and only has one move which is literally just a big fireball. And the fireball isn't even blue, it's literally just regular fire. This is so ass. Isobu is one of the most interesting and unique tailed beasts and is honestly one of my favorites. Because Isobu along with Saiken were sold by Hashirama to the Kirigakure and was eventually sealed in his first known Jinjuriki Rin Nohara then was later sealed in the fourth Mizukage Yagura Karatachi. But the reason I say he is so interesting is the amount of miscellaneous abilities he possesses along with the typical abilities that the tailed beasts have. Because not only can Isobu use his shell to transform into a cannonball, he also has water release which he uses to do water blast, plus he can swim and can spawn coral on his opponent to immobilize them just by making contact. But it gets even worse in the anime since in the anime he can use the illusionary mist genjutsu which torments the targets with past events and he also has a space time ninjutsu that allows him to access a separate dimension. Son Goku was one of the coolest tailed beasts which is pretty ironic given his nature. But you see as the four tails, Son Goku along with Kokuo was sold by Hashirama to Iwagakure where after decades he was eventually sealed inside of Roshi. But the reason why I called him cool in particular is because he is the only tailed beast that can perform taijutsu due to having anthropomorphic features being modeled after monkeys who have similar bills to humans. But not only that, in addition to having the basic abilities of a tailed beast, he has earth and fire release which allows him to breathe green fire and also a keke genkai in lava release which allow him to create volcanoes at will. Plus he He's also just unnaturally strong, being able to casually throw around Yuki like he's made out of paper. Kokuo might not be the strongest tailed beast, but she does have the strongest ability out of the nine. Because as the five tails, Kokuo along with Son Goku were sold to Iwagakure and was eventually sealed inside of her only known Jinjuriki named Han. And along with the standard abilities of a tailed beast, she also possesses great physical strength, being able to use her horns to stab and knock back Gyuki. But the reason I said she had the strongest ability is because she has two nature transformations in fire and water, which she combines to create her overpowered Keke Genkai boy release. And when I say it's overpowered, it's overpowered because what boil release does is raise the temperature of your chakra to its boiling point, boosting your strength, allowing for someone like Han to smack the ever-living shit out of KCM Naruto. But the best feat is from Kokuo who lent her chakra to Naruto, which boosted his strength so much that he was able to completely overpower Kaguya and slam her into the side of a mount. Saiken might just be the nastiest tail beast, but at least he has some pretty cool abilities. Because as the six tails, Saiken along with Isobu were sold to Kiragakure and decades later was sealed inside of his only known Jinjuriki Utakata. But the reason he gets a pass due to his abilities is because he is one of the few tailed beasts with inherent abilities. That being the ability to produce a corrosive and acidic liquid from its body as well as release a extremely corrosive gas called Wisdom Wolf Decay that once you inhale or even touch corrodes your body from the inside out. But he does also have water release which he uses to produce a starch syrup that can immobilize a target 
target and also perform the soap bubble jutsu which unfortunately is anime only. Chome might actually be the second worst tail beast and has a almost completely empty bag. Because as the seven tails, Chome was not actually affiliated with any of the five great nations, but instead was affiliated with Takigakure, the same place Kakuzu is from where eventually down the line he was sealed inside of Fu. But the reason I said he had no bag is because not only does he not have any nature transformations, his arsenal apart from tail beast bombs is literally just biting the opponent and ramming them with his horn. He also has other abilities such as making a cocoon that hinders chakra absorption and releasing a blinding powder to disorient his opponents. But the only thing that saves him from being dead last is the fact that he's the only tail beast that can fly, which is pretty cool. Yuki is the coolest tail beast and is the most versatile tail beast among the nine. Because as the eight tails, Yuki along with Matatabi was sold to Kumagakure where he would be continuously resealed into a Raikage and Jinjuriki duo until he was eventually sealed inside of Bluebee who later died and passed him on to Killer B. But the reason why I say he's the most versatile is because not only can he perform regular tail beast bombs, he can also fire them like Kamehameha. He also naturally produces inks in Season Octopus which he uses to make ink clones that can seal any target. He's also super physically strong and durable, being able to smack away Kokuo with one hand, cause tornadoes to form by just spinning, catch Kurama's tail beast bomb with one hand, tank his own tail beast bomb to the face, and that's not all, since he can shapeshift his tentacles into a mini version of himself, partition a part of his chakra into his Jinjuriki to save them if he was ever to be extracted, and he boasts the highest amount of battle experience and battle IQ among all 9 tail beasts. Kurama is the best tail beast and the strongest by a very large margin, because Kurama was never supposed to be captured and was purposely left alone at his temple until Madara found him. And it's only after defeating Madara that Hashirama decided to capture him and even then he still needed the help of the greatest sealing ninjas in history just to contain him. Which is what led to Kurama being sealed inside of Mito Uzumaki who later passed him on to Kushina after she died. But the reason why I said that he's the best and the strongest is because even though he himself does not have any canon special abilities, he more than makes up for it in the sheer amount of chakra and chakra potency. Because with just a tiny bit of Kurama's chakra, Naruto gains the ability to sense emotion and was fast enough to blitz the Raikage. Then after gaining access to the full half, he could casually deflect 5 tailed beast bombs with his body, manhandle 5 tailed beasts at the same time, cancel out a combined tailed beast bomb with just one of his own, give the entire shinobi alliance a 3 times multiplier, deflect a blast from the 10 tails, and pulverize Madara's meteors. The 10 tails is way too powerful and shouldn't ever be ranked among the regular tailed beasts. Because as the 10 tails, after it was planted and grew into a god tree, it was absorbed by Kaguya who was defeated by Hagoromo and Hamura who extracted the ten tails from her, sealed it inside of himself, becoming the first ten tails in jerky. But the reason why he can be compared to the others is because not only is his power stated to be immeasurable and is impervious to anything that is in taijutsu or senjutsu based, he was also stated to have drunk oceans, split open the earth and hoisted up mounts. Its power was so immense that they thought it was a small planet and by just screaming he could generate natural disasters, which is why he can just casually throw around Kurama and Yuki and flick away their tail beast bombs then create its own tail beast bombs that can create explosions that reach into space. 